Hey everybody, hope you're doing great today. And in today's video, I'm going to look at whether or not the US is in a recession. You may have been seeing on social media and the mainstream media, there's a ongoing debate on whether we're in a recession or not. Certain, uh, certain outlets and certain sectors in the social media and the mainstream media, you know, they've, they've got their difference of opinion. So I'm going to look at the, the data, the, the information that's out there and, and kind of see what, uh, you know, what is really the situation. So one question you may have is why are we interested in, you know, whether we're in a recession or not? And with that, I would say that, you know, it, it's, it's important in planning. I mean, a lot of investing, whether you're investing in real estate or investing in stocks or something else involves planning, you know, looking at the future. And with the recession, generally the economic output of the country, uh, in this case, the United States, I mean, uh, recessions can happen all over the world. It can happen on a global basis where it's basically in fact, uh, impacting the entire planet, you know, all countries involved. Or recessions could be, you know, selected to this particular countries. It could be in the, in the U.S. or it could be in Europe, whereas, you know, other countries may not be in a recessionary state. So from, in terms of investing, you want to be able to predict, you know, okay, there's a recessionary period or there's a uh, inflationary period, non-recessionary non period, because that way you can allocate your, your dollars, your investment money towards, you know, what you think will work better during that, that period. Especially during a recessionary time period, you know, there's this uh, risk on versus risk off. So people want to go towards less, uh, less risky investments, less risky assets. You know, your high flyer stocks, maybe you shy away from those. And instead, you go for your, your blue chip or your more your dividend paying stocks. But from tr traditional companies, you know, who've been around for a while, who've been, you know, on a regular basis, either increasing dividends, you know, have regular... Uh, earnings that are going up. So they're more likely to weather recession better compared to some high flying stock who, you know, they're relying on, you know, the uh, recent low interest rates and may not have a good source for profits. So recessions do shake out a lot of companies. And, you know, the, the last thing anybody wants to be, uh, be doing is investing in one of those companies or investing in real estate that, you know, in a come a recession time, it's actually going to be a negative cash flow. You're, you're going to be holding the bag when, you know, had you had sold during the right time, you know, you can, you can protect that funds. And then, you know, when, when we come out of a recession, you can go reinvest those funds. Similar with uh, investing in real estate. If you like to invest in real estate, you know, recession in general, uh, you know, you'll see reductions in value, you know, as the commercial real estate starts seeing issues because, you know, whether, you know, Tenants aren't making payments, the businesses aren't making money, you know, people are spending less, so they're spending, you know, they're, the tenants have less money to give to their landlords. So that, that kind of compounds, you know, then either the tenants, they go bankrupt, you know, there are higher uh, rates of bankruptcy during recession. And so with that, you know, then there's less money going towards these landlords and then landlords either, you know, their own money, they have to, you know, if they don't, they're not cash flowing, they've got large debts on that, large leverage on their, on their real estate investments. They have to either have to sell, you know, or they're going to have to start cutting rates, you know, cutting their lease rates in order to, to keep up. And then, you know, overall, it just, it, it's kind of a uh, cascading effect, a domino effect. You know, once one side starts, you know, getting squeezed, then everybody else is starting to get squeezed. Uh, in the future, I will do a video on how to prepare for recession. Uh, there are, you know, we had a recent recession. I'll, I'll look at the data here in, in a few minutes. But, you know, we had, uh, you know, a recent brief recession, kind of that pre-COVID, uh, in the early COVID stages, that was, uh, that was quick, uh, kind of papered over with a lot of stimulus, a lot of, uh, you know, rent moratoriums, mortgage moratoriums, increase in employment. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a kind of a different situation, different case. You know, with this situation now, we have, uh, you know, once we get into a recession, especially with the inflation where it's at, it, it becomes hard now to increase those, you know, to send out that free money, so to speak. You know, we can't, we can't just uh, give free money now to everybody, especially when inflation is, is as high as it is now. Now, if inflation does come down, I mean, that's one of the things they want to do with, uh, with a recession is have inflation come down. And by bringing, the, you know, that recession in, that kind of, that works out some of the, the excesses in the market. 
So if these kinds of topics interest you, I'd ask you to subscribe to this channel, uh, hit that subscribe button down below, and if you could, hit the uh, thumbs up on the video, give it a like. That way it helps with uh, other people who are also interested in this, these types of uh, topics to find these videos. So before we can really say, okay, we're in a recession or not, let's, you know, we need to look at what, what is the definition of a recession. And this is from Investopedia. So recession, uh, uh, recession is a significant widespread prolonged downturn in, in ac economic activity. Generally, they're looking at two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. The uh, entity that is the one who declares a recession or not, and that, that kind of everybody else looks towards is the National Bureau of Economic Research, or ENBER. And they measure recessions by looking at non-farm payrolls, basically the job, job market, industrial production, and retail sales, you know, the stuff that, uh, you know, you and I are going to the stores and buying, you know, what are, are people increasing their purchases or are the purchases going down? So as they note there, I mean, that those are other indicators and they, they kind of go beyond just looking at the, uh, the negative GDP uh, measure, which a lot of uh, in the media and social media like to quote, hey, you know, our, our GDP is negative. So that must mean we're in a recession. Whereas, you know, that's, that's not the case because there's, there's more to look at than just the GDP numbers. You know, as, as stated there, it, you know, there's no fixed rule about what measures con contribute information to the process or how they're weighted in our decision. So it, it obviously takes a lot more than, uh, than just what is shown here. And here, let's take a look at the Ember website. So anybody can go to this website here. This is a, a question and answer section on their website, frequently asked question. And you know they, they talk about here, what is a recession? What is an expansion? You know When we're not in recession, we're, we're in an expanding economy. So they look at three criteria. They look at the depth, diffusion, and duration. You know they, uh, For example, in here, they refer to that February 2020 peak in economic activity. And then we had a, a de decline where we had that recession. That was during the COVID timeframe. I mean, that, that type of recession was kind of uh, artificially induced because everybody was kind of, you know, a lot of people who weren't essential, weren't critical to the economy, were told to stay home, you know, keep safe, don't spread the, spread the virus. And so that kind of shut the economy down. So the Ember looks at uh, expansion and contractions and they, they have it, uh, they refer to it as a peak and trough dates. The trough, uh, the peak, you know, is basically the top. You know, where is the top and the trough is the, the, the bottom. And the in, as uh, noted here in this next question, what indicators does the committee use to determine peak and trough dates? You know, again, they look at uh, real personal incomes, non-farm payroll, real personal consumption, wholesale uh, pricing, and employment as well, too. So let's look at what the Federal Reserve says. So this is from the Federal Reserve website, federalreserve.gov. And this is an article financial macroeconomic indicators of recession risk. So just, just the introduction, we can kind of see what they're looking at. You know, recession imposed sizable hardship with large, large increases in unemployment rate and related dislocations. In addition, recessions can lead to large shift in financial markets. So while the, the Ember is kind of the, the main go-to for declaring a recession, the, uh, the Fed also has their own tools and their own, their own information. So let's look at, uh, you know, like, like we talked about before, you know, gross domestic product, the GDP. GDP is basically a measure of the, you know, the economic output of everything. So this is from the uh, FRED website, the stlouis.org uh, Federal Reserve website. They, they have a lot of statistics over there, so it's a great, great source to use. So this GDP chart from the Federal Reserve website shows the GDP since 1947. And as you can see, some recessions over here, such as this one here in the, the late 40s, early 50s, quarter one, quarter four, 1948, uh, GDP was around 280, and it's in terms of billions of dollars, and then uh, the drop there down to 270. So the, you know, here's another one, quarter four, 1957, 474, yeah, let's see, 474, go back quarter three, 479, and then ended at 471. So the, you can see the, you know, the GDP does drop. There's a negative. Uh, here's a case where, you know, quarter two, 1960, 541 uh, to 545. So this one actually had an increase, but, you know, the, the, the Great Recession we had in the 
2007, 2008, you know, here's quarter one, it actually went up a little bit. Quarter one started at uh, 14,706, you know, peaked at 14,898, and then, uh, you know, kind of dropped to their, their trough, 14,380. And here's the uh, kind of the uh, COVID, COVID, we had a brief recession there, they shut down, shut down the economy, obviously that's gonna cause a recession. So with the Bureau of Economic Analysis, this is a census, uh, falls under the census, and they, they collect data to determine the GDP. As we can see over here, quarter one, uh, 2022, we did have a negative, negative G GDP. Quarter two as well, we also did have negative GDP. So if you're just going by the, you know, just by the GDP standard, you know, then, yeah, okay, that was recessionary. So when you look at things like the unemployment rate, uh, you can see over here, we had this huge peak over here and that's that's during the height of the, the COVID shutdowns. A lot of people were told to stay home, you know, don't don't go to work. So a lot of people were laid off, but you know, at current, current days, you know, right around here, December, 2022, we're looking at a 3.5% unemployment rate, which is uh, quite low. I mean, even looking at here, this, uh, the Great Recession over here, I mean, the peak were, you know, even outside of the recession, the peak was around, maybe right around 10%. You know, going back to this 1980s recession here, same same thing, about 10.8%. So when we're, you know, these are the peaks, you know, you can see a lot of peaks here during these other recessions, you know, from a, from a dip to a peak in the unemployment. Over here, we had this, you know, excluding this over here, we're kind of on a downward trend and, you know, 3.5% unemployment. Yeah, people get laid off. There have been a lot of layoffs announced. You know, you've heard layoffs from uh, Amazon, Facebook, uh, some other tech companies. So I think that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. That's just the start. And in most of those cases, the two of those employees are finding, finding jobs right away. So you're in high demand for some other company or you've got something, already got something lined up. So even, you know, when the layoff comes, you're, you're, uh, you're quick to bounce back. And here are the total job openings. So this is uh, also at the uh, St. Louis Fed uh, website. As you can see, I mean, here we are. These are levels in the thousands. So here's, uh, you know, November 2022, you know, 10,458. Our peak over here, 11,000. So we're still, at, we're still at a high. I mean, going back to the, to the Great Recession over here, you know, you could see this big drop over here. You know, there was a, a drop over here, you know, same thing that was COVID, but we're still still at all time highs over here. And then even kind of comparing to the, uh, you know, back here in this 2000, early 2000 recession, uh, Y2K recession, you know, the numbers are going down. So we've gone down, with, but there's still a lot of employment out there. Still a lot of people, uh, a lot of companies looking for to hire employees. And so that, you know, that, that kind of keeps the resiliency of the economy going, whereas, you know, so with that high demand for employees, then, you know, the, to say then we're in a recession is, is kind of difficult, you know, going back to this, you know, yeah, okay, let's look at here, you know, we've got two months of negative GDP, certainly the economy kind of slowed down, but part of that, you know, the, there's a big inflation rush there. So a lot of things were getting more expensive. People were cutting back, you know, but then look at quarter three over here. I mean, it was, well, quarter one and quarter two, I mean, quarter one was, uh, was negative starting 2022. They picked up in uh, quarter two and then look at uh, quarter three. I mean, how much, you know, we're quarter two, we were looking at a negative 0.6% and then the quarter two, 3.2%. So there's a big jump over there, you know, so, so to say, you know, either whether we were in a small recession, you know, they haven't declared that, you know, it doesn't look that way to me. So you, you can see though, with quarter three, you know, we're back to 3.2% 3.2% GDP change from the preceding quarter. You know, that to say then that we're we're in a recession, it, it's kind of a hard sell. Now that's not to say that, you know, there isn't a recession on the horizon. I mean, you look at all the headlines now and you know, even my thoughts are that yeah, there, we are we do have a recession on the horizon. So people do need to get prepared. You know, that's the in the, in the past. It's not as easy to tell, you know, that I guess today with our, with our data, with our computers, with all this interconnected systems, it's easier to tell, 
okay, here's here's a situation going on. We've got other factors as well. We've got uh, you know war war out there in Europe. We've got uh, supply chains still shut down from from China and other other countries that supply us. The uh, the oil and the energy that normally comes out of Russia is also slowed down. You know, due to sanctions, due to the uh, Ukraine war over there, and over here too, even our you know, infl- rate of inflation. I mean, we're still at, uh, you know, seven, seven percent. You know, there's the hope that it comes down, but, you know, if, even if it comes down a little bit, you know, is it going to stay there? Is there something else? Is there another shoe to drop? You know, the government's spending also quite a bit of money. There's a lot of state governments that are distributing money, you know, to their, to their uh, residents. The, the federal government just passed that large spending bill, and that all, that all contributes to inflation too. So, so over time, you know, the, to say that there, there's not going to be a recession or, you know, whether we have a, a, a soft landing as uh, the Federal Reserve is, is predicting, you know, that remains to be seen. You know, more, more people than not are predicting, you know, we, we're in for a rough landing rather than, the, than a soft landing. So what are your thoughts? Do you think we are in a recession? You know, what, what uh, anecdotes do you have? What personal stories do you have that make you believe we're in a recession? Do you think the way we measure recessions are accurate, or should we be changing these these standards, you know, to, to define a recession, to measure a recession? Feel free to add your comments, your thoughts in the section below. And again, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.